beautiful morning to you, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we give God thanks and praise for this new day. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints, so all our readings and our discussion will reflect on the same. But before we do, let us have our opening hymn. I was lost in shame, could not get past my flame until he called my name. I'm so glad he changed me, darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out and I'm no longer bound. I'm so glad he changed me, see I. We give thanks to the Father, who has made us worthy to share in the inheritance of the saints and light. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Together, Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you be our power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. 
Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascending Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. So let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ was raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin, and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ has been risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honour and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which we have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 111 Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Psalm 112 Hallelujah! Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness would last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. 
Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and pine away. The desires of the wicked will perish. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. I, Ezra, saw on Mount Zion a great multitude that I could not number, and they were all praising the Lord with songs. In their midst was a young man of great stature, taller than any of the others, and on the head of each of them he placed the crown, but he was more exalted than they. And I was held spellbound. Then I asked an angel, who are these, my Lord? He answered and said to me, These are they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal and have confessed the name of God. Now they are being crowned and receive palms. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man who is placing crowns on them and putting palms in their hands? He answered and said to me, He is the Son of God, whom they confessed in the world. So I began to praise those who had stood valiantly for the name of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Melanictus. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Through your prophets, you promise of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you, all the days of our life. And your child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins, in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of God, written in Hebrews, chapter 11 verse 32 to chapter 12, verse 2. And what more shall I say? For time will fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel, and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained the promises, shut the mouths of lions, quench raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. 
they were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better, so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our feet, who, for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear friends in Christ, I come to you in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, I hope you are ready for a biblical journey today. Many of us in our thinking believe that the saints of God, that the trials and tribulations that you have faced were easy. They think that, okay, cool, what the Hollywood depiction of being crucified and that the treatment that the saints and the prophets and the apostles and the disciples and all of them received that it would have been easy. We tend to not take into consideration the hardships that they would have faced because of their decision to follow Jesus. They would have faced hardships whereby they would have the stories told would have been diminished over the years. In our modern society, things such as prosperity gospels take away from the true suffering that, our, our, that those who went before us, they have, they, that they went through. It takes away from the understanding of the fact that they were willing and in many cases they gave their lives for the cause as martyrs so that we will be able in our modern time to celebrate what we call Christianity. But do we truly explore? Today we celebrate All Saints Day. All Saints Day is a day that is put aside for us to remember those that would have gone before us, particularly the major saints. Some of these saints would have been mentioned today or in terms of the reading from Hebrews. Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and we may want to add people like Mary, Noah, etc., etc. And in our thinking of these persons, they all have a similar concept in that their character, though various, though different, they all were loyal and faithful to God. And this day is whom those types of persons are whom we recognize. Some you may know, some you may not know. But that's the concept and the purpose of all saints. Day. The major saints, those who made a major contribution to the scripture, we remember them and we remember their passing and all these things as well. All Souls Day, which is celebrated tomorrow, please God, and you will hear that from our dear brother in Christ, 
Reverend Carl Scipio and his delivery to Morocco Squad. It's quite similar, but the concept is not as specific, but it refers to all the saints of God. So why do we celebrate All Saints Day? Why do we pay attention to the aspects of persons? Let's look at Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 8 to 13 says, For you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruits of the spirits and all goodness, righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by light. For whatever makes manifest is light. So what this speaks to is that how you, their purpose, their mission, was to expose or to share the light of God with their brothers and sisters in Christ. So that even up to their death, they showed that they believed in something that was so important to them that they had to give their lives for it to show. They did not deny Jesus even upon their death. Think about Samuel. Samuel, when he was stoned, and this was when Paul, formerly Saul was introduced. And Samuel was stoned because he would not deny Jesus. He would not take back his praise. He would not take back the utterances that he made when he shared of the goodness of Jesus. He continued to stay steadfast and he continued to stay focused. And this is another aspect that reminds us that we here can see those persons because yes Jesus Christ was perfect and Jesus in his aspect he came and he showed us how to live our lives and how to truly honor God and how to dedicate our lives to God and the saints what they did was remind us as well that hey you are honoring God and this is how we do it Paul and the other disciples and the apostles, when they honored Jesus, they went around and they continued. They endured hardship. They endured the suffering. They endured the bitterness of the pain. But my dear friends, I urge us to remember and for us to get a better idea. Let us look at the Hebrews readings for today. We will start, I will start particularly at, at chapter 11, verse 33. Who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fires, escaped the edge of a sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. So those are some of the things that Paul is reminding the Hebrew people of what the saints did. But here are some of the things that they suffered. Verse 36 says, Others suffered mocking and flogging, and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sown, sown in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats. So before I go to that, so you see the things. And Paul knew what he was talking about because he wasn't just randomly speaking. What Paul was doing was sharing probably from his own experiences of when he 
before he encountered Jesus on the road to Damascus. So he is speaking here about the things, the way how people died so that they continue to hold fast to their belief in Jesus. Here how they lived. They wandered deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in ground. Yet all, the, all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God has provided something better, so they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. I'll stop there for a second. So that they suffered and they went and they continued. So they had to leave their homes. Some of them, their homes were taken from them. They would have lost their jobs. Their families would have disowned them. These are the things that they would have gone through. Are you willing to, to give up these things in your life to truly be representative of Jesus Christ? Are you willing to give up of your, your comf come out of your comfort zone and lose everything for Jesus in order to gain the inheritance of the kingdom of God? Are you willing? Are we willing? Because it speaks here about despite all of that, and I'll read chapter 12, verse 1 again, which says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Hear the, hear the magic part? And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. You're not just running, you know? you're running with perseverance. You're sticking to it. You stay focused. You come like if you're running a marathon. You don't just start sprinting and then after you lose and then halfway through the marathon, you, 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 you're tired because you're burnt out. You didn't pace yourself. No true perseverance. You have run the race. You, have did, you did what you have to do. And welcome home, good and faithful servant, because you kept focus on Jesus. And that is extremely important. You keep your focus on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because the verse 2 says, Looking to Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross disregarding its shame and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. You, we tend to, to gloss over these things because sometimes it's so good to hear about the, the goodness of God, which is awesome. We're so good to hear about celebrating harvests. It's so good to see about celebrating the kingdom and the promises, but we don't think about what we are willing to sacrifice here on this earth so that we may be with the saints and inherit the kingdom of God and all its righteousness because that is that aspect is important to us. How do we live our lives? How do we conduct ourselves? How do we retreat the persons around us? How, how, how? The promise is made by Jesus. He went to prepare mansions for us in heaven so that we would have places to stay. We weep at funerals, but once we believe that our brothers and sisters in Christ had celebrated a life that is full, a life that was honoring to God, we should be celebrating their lives. We should be worshiping God and thanking God for their influence in our own lives and making us better people. We are Today is a day of celebration, my dear friends in Christ. Today is a day where we celebrate the works that, the, the, that those who went before us would have done. Today is a day where we celebrate that we can live our lives as we are still here on this earth 
and live our lives that in a way that is pleasing to God so that others who do not know about the love of Jesus may want to come closer to him. We live our lives in such a way that those who don't understand what it means to sacrifice your life in order to gain it, how to die in order to be resurrected into the kingdom of God, how to serve a man who was crucified on a cross, dead for three days, and rose victoriously from the dead, they will understand how it is when we show our love for God in honor and glory. Friends in Christ, it is easy to lose faith. It is easy to lose hope. But it is also easy if we do not, if we continue to allow ourselves in the, in the faith and the, in, the, in the worldly execution of our daily lives and don't think about Jesus. In the book of Second Esther, which we read from today, when the prophet was asked, and, and he asked, who are these, my Lord? And he answered me, they who have put off mortal clothing and have put on the immortal have confessed the name of God. They are being crowned and receive palms. So, and we, and it continues. It continues. We're going now to verse 46 here. And let us read. He answered them. Then I said to the angel, Who is that young man? Before I even go that. Now they are being crowned and received parts. So I'm going back. I'm going down. He answered and said to me, because he asked, Who is the person that put any crowns on them? Who is that young man who is placing crowns on them? And he answered, He is the Son of God, whom they confessed in the world. He is the Son of God, whom they confessed in this world. My dear friends, are we truly going to live our lives the way we are supposed to? Are we going to live our lives in such a way that we acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior? Are we? Because sometimes it is so simple to give up hope when we realize that our friends May we make it more money for us. It may be easy to give up hope when we realize it is difficult for us. But my dear friends in Christ, I ask us today to focus on God. We read stories such as Luke 10, verse 25, and continues to verse 37 of the Good of the Samaritan. And we see that it is easy to say he was a good person, he was a nice man. But do we truly see how it is? to live our lives like that? Where do we see ourselves in that story? Where do we see ourselves as the good Samaritan? Do we see ourselves as a man who was beaten? Do we see ourselves as the priests and the Levites and everybody else who walked past and crossed the road, which who are we in that story of the Good Samaritan? Go and read it up. 
or do we see ourselves when we read Luke chapter 16 of the rich man and Lazarus when the rich man and Lazarus died at the same time and the rich man in his life he lived a life that was flam I don't know he lived a life that was exciting and all these things but he did not think about salvation and then the flip side Lazarus lived a life of suffering but he focused and he kept his faith on Jesus and then they both died on the same time and one and the rich man ended up in hell and the poor man ended up in heaven not because he was rich he ended up in hell and not because he was poor he ended up in heaven but the focus on what they did while they were alive is what caused them to focus my friends in Christ I urge you today when we go to funerals and we hear the message being preached it is not for the dead it is too late for them but the message is being preached for you and for me so that we may use the opportunity to draw our lives closer to God take stock of our lives remember our mortality and know the decisions we have to make have you decided today to follow Jesus have you decided to pick up your own cross and live a life that is pleasing to God have you decided that you acknowledge your mortality on this earth but we focus for a bigger and better day when we take off these mortal clothes and put on the immortal ones. Name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In our intercessions, remember, at this point in time, the Right Reverend Claude Blakely, Diocesan Bishop of Trinidad and Tobago. Remember all members of clergy within our diocese. In particular, remember the Reverend Dr. Anderson Maxwell, parish priest. We remember as well all members of clergy who assist him at this time. Lord, we pray for all ministries within your church. And we pray that your grace will guide us to help those who most desperately need our help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Dear Lord, we pray that you will clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon the earth, and let your saving health among all nations. Dear Lord, let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor, less fortunate, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, physically, be taken away. Create in us, dear God, clean hearts, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. At this moment, I'd like to take the opportunity to extend some birthday greetings before we go to the prayer of dedication. On Sunday, our dear sister in Christ, our diocesan secretary, Miss Stacy Perez, celebrating her birthday, that was the 30th. Yesterday, our dear brother Francis Sampson celebrated his birthday on the 31st. Happy birthday, belated birthday to you both. Today we have a number of birthdays. We have firstly the Reverend Carl Scipio, Deacon, happy birthday to you. We have as well Michael Jordan Alcock and Joy Lorraine Williams, happy birthday to you all. Then we have some birthdays coming up later this week. I have on the third, we have Alena Hamlet, 
Charles Warner and Nyla Barton. Happy birthday in advance. And then on Saturday, we have Kyle Kipps celebrating his birthday. Happy birthday in advance to you. May God richly bless each and every one of you as you celebrate another day of life. We also pray at this time for the family of Wendell Douglas, who commemorates his first anniversary of passing on the 31st of October. May God continue to grant his family strength and support as his soul rests in peace. The Prayer of Dedication Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our hearts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons. In the power of the Holy Spirit and the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work in all of us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary.